Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on key stage 5 increasing and decreasing functions. Now what do we mean by an increasing function? It just simply means that the function, if we were to sketch it as kind of y against x, it means that the function is always going uphill like that. So we can see that the gradient of this graph is always positive. Now there's some debate about exactly what an increasing function means, but I would say that an increasing function is one where the gradient of the graph is at least zero. And that means, for example, that it can sort of plateau. You can have these sort of stationary points here, but it's never going downhill. Now a function is strictly increasing if the gradient is strictly greater than zero. So that means it's not allowed to plateau. The gradient is always positive. And it might be that the function is increasing only in a particular interval. So, for example, if we take um, a cubic like this, we can see that in this region here, the function is decreasing because the gradient is negative. Whereas in these two regions, this one and this one, we can see that the function is increasing because it's going uphill. Now there tends to be two types of questions. Uh, one question is where you have to show a particular function is increasing for all x. So I should really say here for all x because this function is going uphill, the gradient is positive for all values of x. Or it might be that the question asks you to identify a range of values of x for which the function is decreasing or increasing. So let's answer some exam questions of each different type. So the first one, show that the function f of x equals x cubed plus 6x squared plus 21x plus 2 is increasing for all real values of x. So we're going to use this definition is an increasing function if the gradient is always greater or equal to zero. So let's find f prime of x, the gradient function. So x cubed differentiates to 3x squared. 6x squared differentiates to 12x. And 21x differentiates to 21. And we've got to show that it's an increasing function for all real values of x. So we're saying this gradient function is greater or equal to zero. Now notice that these all divide by 3, so we could divide both sides of the inequality by 3 to get a simpler inequality. Now how do we show that this expression is greater than 0 for all values of x? Now there's a very standard strategy for that, and that's to complete the square. So if we were to complete the square here, we get x plus, and do you remember that we halve this number, so we get 2, all squared, and then do you remember that we square that number and take it away? Now we've still got the plus 7, and if we just simplify that a bit, we get x plus 2 squared plus 3 is greater or equal to 0. Now why is this true for all values of x? Well that's because anything squared has got to be at least 0. So if this is at least 0 and then we add 3, then we know that the left hand side is at least 3. Now how do we actually write this for the purpose of the exam? We just have to say that x plus 2 squared is greater or equal to zero for all x, those are the magic words, for all x. And therefore, that just means therefore, x plus two squared plus three will be greater than zero. Or we could say greater or equal to three, which is greater than zero for all x. And therefore, we've proven not only that it's an increasing function, but it's strictly increasing, because it's strictly greater than zero for all x. What about this second question? Find the interval on which the function f of x equals x cubed plus 6x squared minus 135x is decreasing. So, as before, we want to differentiate. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. 6x squared differentiates to 12x and minus 135x differentiates to minus 135. Now we're saying that this is a decreasing function, it's going downhill, so the gradient is going to be less or equal to zero. 
If it said strictly decreasing, it would be less than zero. So we just have to solve this inequality. It seems that this is not always true for every value of x because it's suggesting there's only a range of values for which this function is decreasing. So we have to solve this. Now again, notice that all of these divide by 3, so we can divide both sides of the inequality by 3. So we get x squared plus 4x minus 45 is less equal to 0. And then we have a quadratic inequality. So we could use our calculator to solve this, or let's just factorise in this case. So we can see it factorises to x plus 9, x minus 5 is less equal to 0. And then do you remember that we have to sketch this function in order to solve it? So if we're to sketch y equals x plus 9, x minus 5, the roots are 5 and minus 9. So it's a quadratic that looks like this. And we're interested where this y value, this y value is less equal to 0. Well, we can see the y value is less equal to 0 in this range here. So we can see that x is between minus 9 and 5. So it's decreasing for this range of values of x. Now, this is not surprising when we think about it, because if we were to sketch this cubic, it's a positive cubic, so it has this shape like that, and we can see that it's decreasing in that middle section between those two turning points. So if minus 9 and 5 were our two turning points, we can see just from the shape of this cubic that it's going to be between those two turning points, and indeed we do have that there. And then just one more example of this, an actual Excel question. A curve has equation y equals 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 8. Find the range of values of x for which y is increasing. Write your answer in set notation. So let's do that. Again, we're going to differentiate this. So we're going to find dy over dx. And that's going to be equal to, well, 2x cubed differentiates to 6x squared. Minus 2x squared differentiates to minus 4x and minus 2x differentiates to minus 2. And we're saying that that gradient, because we want where y is increasing, the gradient is greater or equal to 0. If it said strictly increasing, it would be strictly greater than 0. So we want to find the range of values for which this gradient is greater than 0. So we just have to solve this. Um, let's halve everything, because everything divides by 2, to make the numbers easier. And then let's just factorise this. So we're going to have 3x and x. We're going to have plus 1 and minus 1 some way around. Well, it's going to be minus 1 here and plus 1 there. Greater equal to 0. Again, let's sketch this. So we can solve this quadratic inequality, but we could use our calculator. This is 1. This is minus a third. And it's a positive quadratic. Well, we're interested where this y value is greater or equal to 0. So it's these two tails. So we can see, therefore, x is either less than minus a third, less than or equal to minus a third, or x is greater or equal to 1 in this region here. However, it wants it in set notation, uh, and the way we could write that is we want all x such that x is less or equal to minus a third, so that gives us a set of values of all x such that, that's what the colon means, x is less equal to minus third, or we want all values x such that x is greater equal to 1. And remember, we can use the union operator to get either these values or these values. So we're going to have x such that x is greater or equal to 1. And that is the final solution.